This video highlights the contributions of a lesser known but extremely important mathematician named Pappas. One of the few facts known about Pappas was his birth in Alexandria, Egypt, home to the most famous library of ancient times, although it's likely that the physical library of Alexandria was destroyed prior to Pappas' birth. At any rate, Pappas must have found some way to study his scholarly predecessors because he's now recognized as the last great mathematician of the Greco-Roman era. Having written an enormous volume of work, most notably the synagogue, meaning collection, which was an extensive account of previous mathematical works, along with his own ideas that were inspired by his predecessors. One of Pappas's most famous essays concerned the larger-than-life Pythagoras and his cult of followers, the Pythagoreans. Pappas writes that upon the discovery of the Pythagorean theorem, his followers were so overjoyed they celebrated by thanking the gods with a sacrifice of oxen. Of course, animal sacrifices were a common form of expressing religious thanks, but killing takes an extremist turn when there are mutterings that Pythagoras may have opened a can of worms by introducing irrational numbers. In fact, one of his followers, Hippasus, greatly angered his colleagues by overtly disputing the devoutly held idea that all numbers could be written as a ratio of whole numbers angered so much so that the Pythagoreans decided to perform a human sacrifice, drowning the heretic. These were not cute little minions. Now, as Pappas writes about the Pythagorean cult, he becomes intrigued by their symbol of brotherhood, the pentagram. But in fact, Pappas rejects the notion that the pentagon is the basis of power in the universe. Instead, claiming that bees have a better idea with their hexagons, writing that there being then three figures which of themselves can fill up space round a point, the triangle, the square, and the hexagon. The bees have wisely selected for their structure that which contains most angles, suspecting indeed that it could hold more honey than either of the other two. So, Pappas begins to focus on the hexagon, and he decides, in a sense, to partner opposite vertices. Then, he reimagines the relationship of opposition as two lines, and this may throw some people who expect meticulous and symmetric work from mathematicians, but Pappas's lines weren't parallel, and he scrambled the vertex labels. In fact, He's created a non-metrical representation. If you can handle that, stay with me, because what Pappas does next is he now associates opposite sides of the hexagon and transfers that relationship onto what we'll call the projection, this new representation for associations. Now, of course, he continues this process for the other two pairs of opposite sides. And the result is three points of intersection that are collinear. This may remind loyal video watchers of Pascal's mystical hexagrams. In fact, here is Pappas's work reconfigured to fit Pascal's work inscribed in a circle. By the way, Pascal's ideas are not limited to circle inscriptions. Ellipses would work just as well. There's no topological difference between these shapes. So, the fascinating big idea is that Pappas, way back in the 4th century, had shown a degenerate conic could display a mystical property, and his work set the stage for an entirely new branch of mathematics known as projective geometry.